or smaller organization like America's snowboard team where mm -hmm. there's four athletes and there's two coaches and that's it. A decision needs to be made. It's, you know, six people total that need to make that decision. Yeah. It doesn't have to go through, you know, a coach and then the, you know, head of U.S. snowboarding and then the head of, you know, U.S. skiing. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't, there's no hierarchy that's involved. It's you, your, your team members, your coach. And yeah, exactly. Pretty much it. You know, and well, um, that takes a lot of the stress out of it for, for an athlete because, you know, you know exactly where it's, these decisions are coming from. Okay, what, now this is something that I wondered about. I think the last Olympics, it seemed like the United States sent a big bunch of freestyle mm -hmm. competitors and one or two race competitors. Yeah. Why was that? Was that because they felt they had a better shot with freestyles to win a medal? Or were the racers just didn't have good enough times to go? Uh, well, both. It, it's a combination of both. Um, you know, historically, the U.S. has always been dominant in freestyle yeah. um, over the rest of the world. I mean, well, we've always, that has been our niche. That's been where we've led, where classically the Europeans have always been very dominant in racing. So we stack the deck in freestyle. So we stack the deck in freestyle, but and it's that, also that's based to your on, disadvantage, then, right? It is. It is. It's it's to my disadvantage and, and people who compete in, in alpine because the way it's going to break down and, and what happened is they added an additional sport. They added border cross, mm -hmm. and then they didn't add any additional quota spots. And where we sort of get the an unfair shake is for snowboarding. They consider all of snowboarding as, say, a discipline. You have, One I believe it's team. 16 or 18 spots now divided up into three disciplines and men and women. Mm -hmm. Whereas skiing, there's so many more spots in each, each discipline. You know, you have downhill and super G and slalom and the combined. You know, mm -hmm. they get so many more spots based on those individual events where all of ours are lumped in together. Mm -hmm. So you're not only competing against uh, other alpiners, but you're com com basically competing against freestylers and border crossers mm -hmm. overall for those, those Olympic spots. And mm -hmm. you know what the national governing body does is they'll look at it and say, okay, well, we have the best chance of meddling in freestyle, and we have a better chance of meddling in border cross. Mm -hmm. So we're going to for sure send four, and then the max you can send is four, four people per discipline, mm -hmm. per gender. So you can send four men and four women for okay. half pipe, and you can send four men and four women for border cross, and four men and four women for alpine, if you were to max yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, but of course, we don't have that many quota spots, so they have to sort of divide it up and say, okay, well, where are we gonna go? So this year, we'll probably get two to three men and one to two women mm -hmm. to go for alpine. Okay. And the last Olympics, we had one male and two females go. So, and you know, even with that, we still won a medal. Rosie Fletcher won the silver medal. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you look at as far as the number of athletes go, we still hold our own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a, a little slideshow that um, you brought to share with us, mm -hmm. and so we can take a look at this slideshow. And if you want to make any comments about some of the pictures we're seeing here, that'd okay. be good. And I guess this is some of your uh, your adventures that you've had on the snow this season. Yeah, uh, these are a lot of these are recent pictures. Uh, this is training at Mount Hood. That's my head coach Rob Roy, mm -hmm. uh, who's from Bend. Uh, and you saw Ian Price earlier. This is GS training. Is that you? Yep, that's me. Mm -hmm. um, this is all up at Mount Hood, and that's slalom, slalom training um, in preparation for the first World Cup that we just had over in Landgraf. Uh, that's our team. Having good times up at the top. And that's uh, that was really unique. That's a, a cat ride we'd get up in the morning. The Mount Hood did a, a great job, and you know they they weren't open the last two weeks we were training, but they stayed open for us. They would groom and and provide snowmobile and cat rides for us to be able to train. So it was a really cool experience. That's Switzerland right there? Yep, that's uh, actually one of the locations of the last World Cup, or last Olympic qualifier. Mm -hmm. And then that's a, a shot of when I won the, I won both the PGS and, and Parallel Slalom Championships. Uh, that's a national championship? Yeah. yeah. 
that's a shot of that. And so Mount Hood, you can you can snowboard there in the summertime. Yep, yeah, this was just uh, about four weeks ago, three weeks ago. And Chris Klug now, he, he had a, a battle with cancer, didn't he? Uh, right actually, he had a he... rare liver disease, uh, and he had a liver transplant in 2001. I saw, I saw a surfing picture there. Yeah. So you're into surfing now too, huh? Oh yeah, I love surfing. So you got to come down to San Diego the next summer and surf with me then. I do, I will. Okay. Um, that we actually uh, went over, we had a week off in between our two training camps and we went over to Cape Kiwanda uh, in Oregon and surfed for a week. With the white sharks, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty sharky actually. Who did you surf with? Uh, with Adam Smith, who's a good friend of mine. He's, a, he's on the U.S. national team. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chris Klug and Klug's he, he's originally from Sisters, Oregon, mm -hmm. and uh, his wife and her family, they were all there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we surfed for about a week and, you know, well, floundered around, caught a few waves. Okay. Yeah, you got to get down to the warm waters. Yeah. At the, yeah. San Diego in the summer, no wetsuits. I, you know, I've only surfed one time without a wetsuit. That was actually, we were visiting uh, our other sponsor, BCF. Mm -hmm. um, they're based out of Virginia. And, we went surfing with a few of the guys from the company there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to surf without wetsuits. Yeah, I know. I know one of your your closest friends is um, Forrest Coots. Yep. And Forrest was a ski racer for Mount Shasta High School when that you he was. and he was actually a state champion also. Yeah. Mount Shasta's had some big time success in skiing and snowboarding, and Forrest told me he surfs with you too a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We actually had a great uh, little surf trip down. We surfed all along the, the coast of California here down to uh, Huntington Beach mm -hmm. uh, for a friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, we, we loved it and you know, it, it's a good uh, sort of balance to what we do. He's a, an extreme skier now. He competes on the World Extreme Tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's nice for us to sort of be out of our element. Get basically. away from the snow for a change a little yep. bit. Yeah, that's good. yeah Mount Shasta, I, I, mentioned that uh, Forrest was a skier in the ski program that was really strong here. Mm -hmm. um, talk just a, a little bit about some of the history of ski racing and snowboard racing in Mount Shasta, which has made, um, I know Forrest told me that uh, he calls Mount Shasta race board mecca. <laughs> and that means yeah. that you see more race boarders here than any place else. And, and um, we can go back and look at some of the history here that, of the, the snowboarding in, in this area, and this, particularly the race history. I think you're one of the kind of the pioneers of race board riding and carving and so forth in mm -hmm. Mount Shasta in this area. And uh, speaking of Mount Shasta, I, I do have to remember to uh, point out that we have some sponsors here. Mount Shasta Ski Park is, help, is one of our sponsors for today's show, this program. 